Matthew LaBeouf. Creditors are asking, where's the beef? And in some cases, you think people say, shut up or pay up. And in this case, it's just pay up. Um, we've got Jennifer Smith of our legal bureau here. Thank you very much for joining us. Tell us about this. This is this, is this famously defunct law firm where partners just flooded out of the door, took all the, all the work with them, and then they filed for Chapter 11, right? Exactly. It's been sort of a rocky six months for the firm. Last week they filed for Chapter 11, and so they've got millions of dollars owed to various creditors, and now they're trying to figure out how to pay them all off, and that's going to lead to... Uh, some interesting chapters for people who used to work there, people who took on former partners, and it's there's this sort of scrounging through the couch cushions now for we, change. We, we've got we've got a, uh, a graphic there that shows um, which partners left and when in February. It's, it started as a trickle eight in February, and then it's up to 126 in May. As they just like, I'm surprised the doors were wide enough to take all the partners flooding flooding through them at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, when a a law firm goes bankrupt, it's a little bit different than when a regular firm goes bankrupt, right? Ex explain what goes on. Right. Um, the, the old saw with law firms is that their assets go down in the elevators every day. They don't, um, you know, their, their assets are their people, their lawyers, so when they borrow money, um, what they use as collateral are basically um, the accounts receivable, sort of unpaid bills, money that they're going to collect. It, it's not, you know, they may have some investment holdings, but mm. it's you know, they generally lease, they don't own property. It's a different store than it might be for a business where you might have sort of, you know, equipment or warehouses or things mm. that you or could sign. Or patents or all that sort of stuff. Right. Because it really is the labor of the, the lawyers right. that really keep it going. It's right. a yes. service business. It's it's the brains in in there and, and the sort of the, the bills that haven't been collected yet. So who's Joff Mitchell? So Joff Mitchell is, he's a New Zealander, as a matter of fact, mm. um, and he is a restructuring expert, and he's been brought in from the firm Zolfo Cooper. He had spent some time in management at various corporations, and now he's the sort of person that you bring in when you're either uh, restructuring or, in this case, liquidating. So, so he's the last person, if you see him going into your building and he's stopping at your floor, you really, you really don't want to see this guy, do you? Well, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not a good sign, um, but you know, he's, he said that you know, he's, got, he's sort of an interest, I don't know if you'd call it the undertaker, but um, you know, he deals with a lot of sort of some of the emotional issues as they're sort of laying off people and, and mm. liquidating. He's got an interesting perspective on the business. So as these partners went, flooded out the door earlier this year, they took business with them to other firms. How does that play into the restructuring efforts? So what, what they have here is they're trying to figure out, so the firm owes more than 315 million to various creditors, secured and unsecured. So how are they gonna be paid? Well, there's, there's a bunch, the, the chunk of, the biggest chunk is expected to be paid by, by the accounts receivable that still belong to the firm. But there are other, they, they also pursue other avenues. One of the avenues that they pursue is unfinished legal work that partners who left take with them hmm. to a new firm. And, and in other law firm failures in California, um, this has been pursued. It's typically pursued by once, once partners leave a firm that has officially dissolved. Hmm. What's different here is that Dewey skipped right over the dissolution and went straight from sort of being active, if not terribly healthy, to filing for bankruptcy. So it, it is expected that they will pursue um, profits from business that was taken from Dewey to the new firms. It's expected that that will be pursued, and it's something that Mr. Mitchell said the estate is is taking a look at to see if they can pursue claims that way. And, and, the, and part of that, they've got to work out when people left, whether they left when it was basically insolvent um, and, and when that date was, right? Well, that that's part of, that actually applies to another avenue that they're looking mm. at, which is to bound to make all these partners quite unhappy, um, something that they call uh, clawback. Mm -hmm. um, and and what the what the bankruptcy estate and trustees generally do is they try and figure out when a firm became insolvent, which is usually some months or even a year before it actually agrees to disband or files for bankruptcy. So any partner who is getting paid out money when the firm was technically insolvent is going to be asked to give some of that money back. So those those are clawbacks. So you, partners are going to be looking at both giving up personal money. And then the firms might uh, be asked They're to give up like money that. as well. So they, they should not go on that summer holiday, I think, to, to the Caymans or something.